I think the joy of being able to share Tozer and to read him is the heart that he had in sharing with other ministers and pastors and people, looking at Christendom as a whole and writing for the paper that he did, but also seeing what was occurring and recognizing what could be a solution towards answering that which he saw as a problem developing within the Christian world. And then not blasting or causing division and strife, but rather sharing from his heart and caring enough to choose to explain out that which it was, identify it, that which it could become, choose to develop from it, and then that which it should go, the direction that they should go. Because a lot of times when we look at things, we react to them instead of take the time to just say, okay, let's stop. For a moment let's look at what this is and identify it first then let's compare it to what it should be and then let's see what god would have us to do about it because it's always a process of maturity that you examine you learn you develop and you grow from it and that's what god does all of our life is that he takes us from glory to glory from grace to grace from forgiveness to forgiveness from mercy to mercy and he incorporates that into our life and as we use that in touching other people's lives sharing with others the grace that we were given then likewise he increases the ability to understand and comprehend what is the fullness of the godhead as well as christ himself living in us so then jesus becomes real he becomes the actual person that he's meant to be living inside you causing you to be like and done to him causing you to even recognize that wow where did that come from? That's not me. That must be the Lord in me. Because you know that in you there dwells no good thing. But you know that whatever's coming out of you is amazing and you're dumbfounded and shocked to see how God, the Almighty God who created the universe, could so use you to touch one other person's life. And that's what amazes me about how we can either blast or bless, how we can instruct or destruct people with our words with our actions with just the very point of not recognizing that god might be using it to teach us something about ourselves in tozer god still speaks through those who can weep be afflicted and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning james 4 9. the bible was written in tears and to tears it will yield its best treasure. God has nothing to say to the frivolous man. It was to Moses, a trembling man, that God spoke on the mountaintop. And the same man later saved the nation when he threw himself before God with the offer to have himself blotted out of God's book of life for Israel's sake. Daniel's long season of fasting and prayer brought Gabriel from heaven to tell him the secret of the centuries. When the beloved John wept much because no one could be found worthy to open the seven-sealed book, one of the elders comforted him with the joyous news that the Lion of the tribe of Judah had prevailed. The psalmist often wrote in tears. Prophets could hardly conceal their heavy-heartedness, and the Apostle Paul, in his otherwise joyous epistle to the Philippians, broke into tears when he thought of the many who were enemies of the cross of Christ and those who end with destruction. Those Christian leaders who shook the world were one and all men of sorrows whose witness to mankind welled out of heavy hearts. There is no power in tears there is no power in tears per se, but tears and power ever lie close together in the church of the firstborn. By the law of just compensation, the heart of the religious trifler will be destroyed by the exceeding brightness of the truth he touches. Tearless eyes are finally blinded by the light at which they gaze. A lot of times people think that it's always a joy joy story and that it's always a go go happy happy camper but sometimes there's a place and a time where god wants you to weep for the sorrow with which mankind has determined himself to go for the souls that will not be saved for the people who will not hear for the times and the places where we have not done the things that god wanted us to do and it costs and it hurt 
And then what's greater to me than any of all of these is when I disappoint my father in some way that I know that I should not have, how it hurts him, even though he's God, but because he's tender, he feels the difference between our relationship that I have with him and he has with me. For the heart that cried out, Adam, where are you, wasn't looking for him, but rather was calling to him as a heart that was broken for the sorrow with which the son had made himself into becoming. In the same way that you are with your children when you see them go through things that they need not do. Oftentimes I have agonized over why me, Lord, that you would give all this knowledge and concept and not be able to share the precept with people to the point of them receiving you and knowing you in a way that to me was so simple and was given so freely and I don't sometimes understand it and it hurts me in some ways not that I know that I'm special but I can't deny the wisdom that God has placed through circumstance in my life and the answers that I know that I have for anything that has come up in life they're always there and they're always with God they're always with Jesus it's always the ability to turn it to God and he can answer it in any way that he chooses and I don't know why I know that and yet so few people will do that and then the sorrow that you see when they choose not to follow the Lord their God it's not always joy joy it could be but sometimes it's sorrow over some of the things that we do that we ought not to Thank you.